Welcome back to Postulates of Quantum Mechanics. My name is Kevin Tokoff. I'm Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to discuss another quantum mechanical postulate, which is that of orthonormality and basis sets. This is kind of a difficult concept to understand, so I'm going to go over the theory on this slide and then go into a practical example that you may have seen in another class but never really thought about to hopefully help you understand this. All right, we've already talked about wave functions and what they are. They contain all available information regarding a particle, um, and we talked about normalization of wave functions, and in the previous video, we talked about how you determine whether or not two functions are orthogonal to each other. And this was the form of the integral that we used to do that. And if the integral went to zero, they are orthogonal, okay? Now, here I have the same wave functions from the previous video. I have xi1 and I have xi2. And I've drawn them on an xy plane to show you it, that they are orthogonal. You can see they're 90 degrees to one another. Okay? And I'm going to represent them this way. Now, if you think about it, if you were to draw a vector like this, just a big xi right here, you could basically use Pythagorean theorem to calculate this xi, right? Because if I took xi1 squared, plus xi2 squared, that would be this big xi squared. That's just Pythagorean theorem. So it turns out that if I were to represent that by this, represent this situation with an expression, it would look something like this. I would have e1, and e1 is really just an eigenvalue that we talked about in another video, but e1 times xi1 down here, plus e2 times xi2 over here, and their sum would have to be this big xi right here, okay? Now, the reason, I, the reason this doesn't look like a typical Pythagorean theorem with the squareds and so forth is because these are vectors, and so what I'm doing is I'm actually adding together linear combinations of the wave functions to yield the total wave function. So if you have multiple wave functions that are orthogonal to each other, you can actually make linear combinations of them and basically add them up to compute a total wave function, okay? In other words, in this example, xi1 and xi2 comprise what we call an orthonormal set or a basis set. And you don't just have to have two, you can have many. So here I have a general expression that represents an orthonormal basis set for these eigenfunctions, okay? So e1 times xi1 plus e2 times xi2, and you can have so many, so many, up to en times i n, and if you put all those in a linear combination together, you get this basis set, which is represented by this big xi. Okay? And one thing I'll just kind of lead to, which I'll talk about more on the next slide, is that the way you could think about this is each one of these wave functions, i1, i2, and so on and so forth, represents a different possible state of the system. So let me give you an example of where this is going. Let's use a very, very simple hypothetical example. Let's suppose you have a person who lives 100 years old. They live to be 100 years just to make the math easy. Let's say for the first 20 years of their life they don't have a job, which is probably fairly reasonable. I mean, don't sell yourself short, but I mean you're going to be in high school and early college, so it's just to make the math easy. 20 years, no job. Okay? Then let's say after college they score a full-time job and they hold it for 50 years. So for the next 50 years, they would have a full-time job, right? So that's 70 years total now. And then let's say for the last 30 years, they decide to take it easy but still keep their brain sharp, so they have a part-time job up until they die, okay? So 20 years, 50 years, and 30 years for no job, full-time job, and part-time job, respectively, okay? So they have three states you could think about. They have, the first state is no job, second state is full-time job, third state is part-time job. But let me ask you a question. Does each of those states contribute equally to the time in their life? Well, no. If they contributed equally, they'd each be exactly a third, but we know that's not the case because it was 20 years, 50 years, and 30 years. So, let's suppose xi1 here could be no job. xi2 could be the full-time job, and let's say this was xi3, that would be the part-time job. These E values, though, that are in front of these, these eigenvalues, would be different. Maybe E1 would be the 20, E2 would be 50, and E3 would be 30. So each of those physical states do not contribute equally, but they sum together to represent the guy's total 100-year life. Okay? 
Now, going to this slide and looking at another basis set that you may have seen something similar to back in organic chemistry. So sorry if that's a traumatic event. It is for a lot of people, but here I have this molecule. And you may notice this molecule has resonance. And I actually have four different resonance contributors here. Okay? Now, if you think back to organic principles, these two middle states right here, which are represented by xi2 and xi3, they are actually more important resonance contributors. And the reason being is because the carbocations on a secondary carbon versus a primary, we're not going to go into that. Just take it on faith that xi2 and xi3 mean more to the overall structure. But remember what the definition of resonance is. You have all of these states of the molecule existing simultaneously. They all exist simultaneously, but they don't contribute to the same extent. For example, in this molecule, states 2 and 3, represented by xi2 and xi3, contribute the most, whereas states 1 and 4, represented by xi1 and xi4, contribute the least. So what if I combined these four physical states into a basis set and added them together to make the overall resonance hybrid? It would look something like this. And these are just hypothetical numbers. I just made them up. Okay? 10 times I1 plus 25 times I2 plus 25 times I3 plus 10 times I4. Does that make sense? Yeah, because I2 and I3 contribute more to the physical state of the molecule, and they have a greater eigenvalue out in front of the function. Okay? Whereas 1 and 4 don't contribute as much, so they have a smaller eigenvalue. And if I were to add all these physical states and their weighted contributions together, I would get the total resonance hybrid okay, for this molecule. So what you can do with, with information like this is you can ask yourself, what is the percent contribution of, say, the second physical state, xi2, to the whole hybrid structure? Okay. Now, if you want to think of it this way, there's another way that's very hypothetical, but it can kind of conceptualize it for you. Another way to think about it is if you took this molecule and you froze it, and you managed to, say, catch the molecule in one of these states, if you caught it where it was only in the xi2 state, what is the probability if you just happen to measure it and catch it right in that state, what is the probability you'd catch it in state two? These are basically asking the same thing. Um, in this context, I will say that the first question is more applicable, but the second question is another way to think about things when we get into particles moving around and so forth. Well, the way you would calculate it is you would actually take the square of all of these. But it's not like you'd have to like foil all this out. It's actually a lot simpler. Because this is, these are linear combinations and not just a regular function, you actually just take each eigenvalue and square it, and then take the eigenfunctions, xi's, and square them. So you'd have 10 squared xi1 squared plus 25 squared xi2 squared plus 25 squared xi3 squared plus 10 squared xi4 squared, and this, this represents the probability that you would actually catch something in that state or the percent contribution. So the percent contribution of xi2 would be this 25 squared divided by the sum of all the squared states. 10 squared plus 10 squared, that's 1 and 4. And 25 squared and 25 squared, that's 2 and 3. And you just calculate this. It's 625 divided by 1450. So the percent contribution of xi2, which also would happen to be the same as 3, is 43.1%. That's how much xi2 as a physical state contributes to the entire resonance hybrid, which is the actual molecule itself. Okay, So this is an example and an application of these basis sets where you have to have orthonormality of the wave functions. All right? So hopefully this made a little bit of sense. In the next video, we're going to talk about one more uh, quantum mechanical postulate, which is actually the act of measurement. All right, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.